From where we last left off, the construction of the RMS Titanic is complete. She underwent her sea trials and passed with all flying colors. She then later returned to Belfast, Ireland to pick up the rest of her crew and then sailed over to Southampton where she will pick up the rest of her crew at. However, the Guarantee Group would see their families for the very last time and they left their own children behind parting gifts for them to remember by. Little they knew they would not see their fathers ever again. If you study the Titanic like I do, you'll find out that today, 112 years ago, is a huge deal. The RMS Titanic was set sail from Southampton to begin her maiden voyage. Now to separate the fact from fiction whatsoever, the departure from Southampton for Titanic wasn't really a big deal like we see in the 1997 film or something out of a kid's book about the ship. So to the people in Southampton, the Titanic was basically a near carbon copy of the RMS Olympic anyway. So if there would have been a celebration or a party, it would be for the Olympic. So let's actually put this in a bigger perspective. Well, literally bigger anyway. Look at the icon of the seas, which is basically from the Royal Caribbean International. And this is a very, very massive ship. But there's actually going to be another icon class ship named the Stars of the Seas, which is actually going to enter service in the end of August 2025. But since I'm actually getting ahead of myself, the Seas of Stars is bigger, but that throw of the uh, Icon class would die down. So if there was like a celebration or a party or a fireworks show, that would basically be for the Icon of the Seas. To the people on Titanic, it didn't matter. The fact they were on the biggest ship in the world is a thrill since the ship is on its main voyage. The Titanic had a good number of passengers that weren't supposed to be on there. In Southampton, 908 of the crew members signed on to the RMS Titanic, while 724 came from Southampton, and can you imagine what it's like for them when they heard the news of the disaster? And once again, I'm getting ahead of myself. And then, of course, you know, prior to Titanic's departure, there was actually a lifeboat drill that was actually conducted by the British Board of Trade earlier in the morning, so that way they know what to do. The man supervising the lowering of the lifeboats was actually Charles Lightoller, who would actually be a first officer at that time frame before Chief Officer Henry Wilde jumped on board. He said that all the boats on the ship were swung out and those that required were lowered down as far as he actually wanted them. Some all the way went down and some even dropped in the water as well. And he accredited about six of them were lowered down part of the way. There was a coal strike that was actually resolved on the six whatsoever. And why Starline tried to work out with the other ships to transfer their coal to the Titanic. And it worked out in favor since Titanic is under book and is on its main voyage whatsoever. At 9 a.m., passengers started to arrive to board the Titanic. Third-class passengers were undergoing health inspections to make sure they do not bring in any diseases with them to the United States of America. If they do happen to have diseases, they will be denied entry to board the Titanic. As the last of the passengers boarded the Titanic at 12 p.m., Titanic sounded its whistles and tugboats pulled the ship away from the dock and fired up its main engines for the ship's maiden voyage. The ship carried 2,224 passengers on board. So as the Titanic was pulling out of the Southampton Harbor, a near disaster happened as the, it almost struck the Titanic. From the crew and the passengers on board, they were waving to their friends and family as the ship was pulling out of the harbor. So they heard these three recession snaps and no one knew what happened. It was just basically snap, snap, snap. So basically, they don't know what's going on. Was somebody shooting at them? You know, no one knows. Was someone firing a gun at them? And when they ran to the source of the snaps, something dramatic happened. The source of the snapping sounds came from the moors line of this ship, the SS City of New York, which is docked beside the RMS Titanic breaking off and snapping. Now, for those that don't know what mooring lines are, mooring lines are giant ropes that hold a vessel in place to a dock or a pier. So what actually did happen was, as the Titanic was leaving the Southampton dock, the powerful suction created by the engines were enough to break the mooring lines holding the New York to the pier, which actually caused the ship to be sucked towards the stern of the Titanic, which threatens a collision, kind of similar in the fashion of the HMS Hawk and the RMS Olympic. Due to the quick-thinking actions by Captain Smith and several tugboats in the area, they were able to avoid a collision barely by a hair. And if you think about it, if this actually did were to happen, there would be a good chance that the Titanic would never hit the iceberg whatsoever. And all of this is going to depend on the severity of the damage or the repairs whatsoever. Then that iceberg would just basically just completely drift south whatsoever. 
and Tight Tank would never hit it. Then inspections were actually carried out, and it turns out there was actually no damage to the ship whatsoever, but it was only just a scare anyway. The departure was actually delayed by a half hour, and once that, those inspections were actually carried out and done, Titanic fired up its engines once again and proceeded to Cherbourg, France. At 6.30 p.m. on the very same day, the Titanic arrived at Cherbourg, France to pick up more passengers. And when arriving, the Titanic is actually way too big to pull up to the dock in Cherbourg. So therefore, two tender ships were actually sent out. One name is the Nomadic, and the other is named the Traffic to drop off passengers or cargo to the Titanic. 24 of the Titanic's passengers disembarked at Cherbourg, while some more actually did board on the Titanic. Some notable names actually included Margaret Brown, Major Archibald Butt, Francis Millet, Joseph LaRoche and his wife, John Jacob Astor IV and his wife Madeline, and the Thayer family. A very interesting fact whatsoever is when Titanic was actually docked in Cherbourg, a priest by the name of Francis Brown took a photo of Titanic passenger Douglas Spedden, who was actually playing with a spinning top with his father and two other men. James Cameron actually used this photograph as a reference as Jack Dawson sneaks up his way to the boat deck in the first class area. While still in Cherbourg, 21 of those who embarked at Cherbourg were French, while the rest are from America, England, Belgium, Canada, Croatia, Greece, Italy, Lebanon, Poland, Russia, Syria, and Uruguay. However, there is actually some luxury French products, including champagne, wine, and cheese, were also transferred to the Titanic at port. Then, at 8.10 p.m., Titanic finally departed in, for Queenstown, Ireland, which is now present-day Cove, with SS Nomadic's crew shouting farewells, saying, See you in 15 days. Tune in tomorrow, when Titanic finally arrives in Queenstown.